Right. So. And I'm going to make Mandy post. You're all set. Excellent. So. I'm going to pop into finance. So have a great meeting, everyone. Thank you, Athena. Thank you. Bye. Like I just ended up with a whole bunch of extra options at the bottom of my screen here. Okay. So, uh, Lindsay, are you ready? Yes, I'm good to go. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, seeing that we have a quorum of the Community Resources Committee present, I am calling this September 1st, 2020 meeting of the Community Resources Committee to order at 2.06 p.m. Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20, allows us to hold this meeting virtually. Uh, the meeting is being recorded for future broadcasts and any votes we take will be by roll call. At this time, I'm going to confirm that each committee member can hear me and we can hear them so that when I call your name, please answer present or here um, and then mute your mic after that. Um, we're going to start with Shalini. Present. Um, Mandy is present. Evan. Present. Um, Steve. Present. And Sarah. Present. My brain is having problems computing off the <laughs> right now. Um, I think, think I did it right now. <laughs> um, at this time, our first item of business is general public comment. Public comments on matters within the jurisdiction of the CRC and residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes. Um, we will not engage in dialogue or comment on a matter that is raised during public comment at this time. To participate in public comment, I believe we do not have anyone by phone. So at this time, if you'd like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand button. Um, and then I will recognize you in due course if that is the case. I am not seeing any raised hands, so we will move on um, from general public comment to presentation and discussion items. This is our comprehensive housing policy discussion items. This is going to be what we spend the bulk of our meeting on, um, probably no more than an hour and a half. We'll see if we go that long with it, um, but that is my end time goal is around 3.30, 3.40 um, if we're not done by then in terms of what we want to get accomplished today. At the last meeting, I had asked that everyone bring to this meeting their potential goals, the very beginnings of a document for comprehensive housing policy. Um, last meeting, we discussed and looked at multiple potential sort of, um, I guess, templates or ideas for what a housing comprehensive housing policy might look like. And we looked at other things. Um, and so we're going to, I guess, start with if anyone uh, is ready to discuss what their thoughts on potential goals are. Um, if no one is ready to, I can always start with mine, but um, I thought I'd open it up to other people first. I guess I will start with mine. <laughs> as everyone's nodding their heads. <laughs> um, so, um, oh, and I just want to mention that we all, I believe, received uh, a thoughts from John Hornick on potential goals, too. Um, it is not in the packet yet. Um, I will likely put it in the packet, but I know it was emailed to everyone, so I didn't feel it necessary to be in the packet at this point, um, but it will probably go in. So, in thinking about goals, I obviously used a cheat sheet of the other comprehensive housing policies we could because I'm not sure how to do goals. Um, but I came up with a couple and I wasn't sure how extensive they should be or not. So I'm just going to go through some random things because they all, from my point of view, they, they deal with different things and they address different types of goals. Um, the first set kind of addresses overarching goals that might not relate only to housing. Um, and then the next set is a little more specific. So one of my goals was potentially diversity. 
that we must ensure that there are housing options in Amherst for all current and prospective residents or prospective residents, future residents. Um, so the diversity of, I guess that would be housing options. Um, for a comprehensive housing policy, I had a goal of achievability, that our housing policy, our goals and our strategies should be achievable in the short and long run. Um, that we should, another goal I kind of wrote out was align and leverage existing funding resources to support affordable and market rate housing. Um, that would be the overarching goal is then I described it as using CPA and CDBG monies to support projects that create, maintain, and preserve both affordable and market rate workforce housing. Another potential goal was to reduce barriers to new supply and promote access to affordable and workforce homes and housing. So a description was to modify our existing bylaws, regulations, and rules to reduce the barriers developers and investors face in creating, maintaining, or preserving affordable and market rate work workforce housing. And then I got into sort of the copy of probably Minneapolis's goals, um, which was the homelessness response. And I, I think you'll see it in John's document in Minneapolis. I just copied the description of that from Minneapolis. Um, and then homeowner support. So we support sustainable home ownership opportunities for low and moderate income housing to maintain and improve housing stability and expand access to home ownership for BIPOC who have historically not had equal access to home ownership. Preservation of affordable housing should be a goal to support the development, creation, and preservation of affordable housing of all types. A goal for senior housing, support the creation of affordable and appropriate senior housing in Amherst for aging in place, and then a title of tenant supports. Um, recognize the value and contributions renters bring to communities and invest in the production and preservation of rental housing. Seek to improve the living conditions in rental housing by ensuring that um, they have supports for, there are supports for improvement of that, I guess, renting stock, housing stock. So that's sort of my list. As you can see, some of them are very, I guess, broad to all housing categories. That was some of the first ones, diversity, achievability, and aligning funding um, and reducing barriers. And then the other ones were specific to specific types of housing. So we can start with a discussion on that or any other thoughts. You're looking for your hand, Sarah, just to I am. <laughs> um, so I guess what I was going to say is that I started looking at a lot of these different policies, and I think that I found it easier to sort of make goals. And then what I feel like is when I'm trying to figure out how if, to look for specifics of how we, we encourage these certain things, then I started going down a complete rabbit hole. Um, and that's where I'm having a hard time is when it comes to trying to see that this is making goals that are achievable. So I just want to say that that's where now all of a sudden I have like a notebook full of different things that different towns or cities have done. And I feel also somewhat confused sometimes about zoning and um, how zoning can or cannot make something achievable. And that's where I'm sort of getting stuck in the mud is how do I get from point A to point B, or there's a million different great ideas and I don't know how we would start to step-by-step step achieve them. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Evan. Great, so um, thank you, Mandy, for, for getting us started because those were really good. Um, I will say, uh, especially in my current state, I feel like I've already forgotten half of what you said. Um, so it'd be, it'd be great if you could uh, maybe add that to the packet um, so I could look at it. Um, now that it's been said publicly, it's no longer expression of opinion outside of a public meeting um, because I liked everything I heard and I've also forgotten most of what I've heard. Um, I, I guess I, the way I saw this was um, sort of sort of broad, which I, I heard from you too, so I'm in part supporting you and some of the things I'm gonna say might be repetitive, um, sort of broader um, level goals, 30,000 foot goals 
um, and then sort of specific objectives underneath those is how I started to conceptualize this. And so the three broad goals I, I, I came up with that I had come up with, I, I've actually put this out publicly, um, was one, um, uh, a zoning bylaw that promotes housing production, housing affordability, and housing diversity, which I think are all actually tied together. You have to produce housing, but it can't all be the same type of housing. It has to meet a whole bunch of different levels. Um, two was uh, sort of economic and legal protections for renters um, to sort of reduce the vulnerability of renters, both um, certainly economically, certainly from a health and safety perspective, and, and also I think uh, legally, a lot of a lot of renters often feel like they are uh, they can't come forward and complain about things, stuff like that. Um, and the last thing was a municipal commitment to affordable housing, which gets back to what you were talking about, use of CDBG and CPA funds. So the way I saw it was sort of there were three different places that we can set goals around, three different categories. One is the zoning bylaw, which we know influences in some ways um, what is built, how it's built. Two is sort of regulatory. How do we ensure that renters feel safe and secure and aren't um, maligned and, and marginalized and, and left vulnerable? And then how do we as a town use our town resources to encourage the production of um, especially affordable housing? Those are the three categories I saw. I think actually a lot of what you said aligns with that um, and a lot of it would fall under. But that's sort of where I had my starting point. Evan, can you say the first one again, the zoning bylaw one? Uh, a zoning bylaw that promotes housing production, diversity, and affordability. Thanks. Just trying to make notes here. Uh, Shalini. Yeah, I think Mamichi, you, you covered all of the points and the ones I was gonna add was around homelessness, workforce, fam making sure that the people who are working here can afford to live here uh, and um, and to me, this, uh, the zoning is the how-to. So once we have the goals, then we'll have the strategies, how to implement it. And those are, how do we make a zoning such that it allows for more density in certain areas? And, um, and I, I dug up a lot of really relevant articles, which I'll share in the drive maybe about, that's more of the how-tos and what would encourage affordable housing and covers inclusionary zoning and the limitations of that and when is it useful and when is it not useful and you know it's so a lot of things because there's a lot of focus on inclusionary zoning so when we come to that discussion we can talk about that but I'll be happy to share that but one thing that's coming up to me right now is um, the climate action goal maybe is, is there a way to um, weave in does that come in here because we talked about the racial equity aspect in housing looking at housing through that lens but is there a in fact i think i had something here which said housing location construction and maintenance should improve environmental sustainability and resilience so i wonder if that could be some sort of a goal any thoughts on that Sarah, absurd. It doesn't have to be on that if you have something else to say. <laughs> so I would say off the top of my head, yeah, absolutely. We should try to find a way to put sustainability in. And again, I think mm -hmm. that that's a tricky thing because we also come into costs. And mm -hmm. so it's something that I do think we should weave in. And then we should try to find like how applicable, like how can we make it so it's something that's feasible for developers mm -hmm. to do, you know, so that that mm -hmm. is also attractive and it's doable. The other thing I was going to say is that um, we heard last night about food deserts and where I live in North Amherst, I think that right now we're a food desert. And so one of the things that I was thinking as well as for housing is how do we make an ecosystem for people? If we talk about diversity and supporting all different walks of life and money. So um, socioeconomic, like how can we then take a look at what we have for services for people? And also when we're encouraging building, we can also um, as a council take a look at the surrounding area and then make things easier for um, services to come in that then support that community. So real grocery stores or farmer's market or mobile markets or, um, you know, I don't know, mail, banks, things like that should also be something we're thinking about. This is 
Do you, do you have any thoughts since we haven't heard from you? I'm just listening right now. Okay, that's, okay. that's fine. I just, I'm keeping track of who said stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think, I, you know, Evan says he doesn't remember where the goals I said, I don't without looking at them either. So, um, but looking at what I mentioned and what others have mentioned, um, I think what I'm hearing is we, we want to find a way to write a policy that we feel is achievable during some length of time. Um, please, if you don't, if you don't think that is something you've heard from a majority of folks, please tell me. Um, and we don't have to set a length of time right now. It looks like we, we have ideas that zoning would need to be part of the discussion, but might not be the top level goal, or as Evan would say, the 30,000 foot goal. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think Evan had it in as sort of a zoning as something that, prom as he said, promotes housing production, diversity, and affordability. Mm -hmm. um, Shalini thought zoning is how you accomplish the goals. So her goal might be, um, housing diversity afford you know a town mm -hmm. that ensures housing product you know appropriate mm -hmm. production diversity and affordability and then sort of a how to do it the policy options or specific development goals would be underneath it i think i had in one of my various varieties of it um reduce barriers to new supply and promote access which is sort of one of the things underneath that would potentially be zoning um as a way to do that so everyone seems to be talking about zoning um, and the question would be whether zoning itself is the goal or whether it's the means to achieve a certain goal. Thoughts on that one? Shalini. Yeah, to me, it's definitely the means to achieve um, walkable um, goal, you know, to allow for more of density and, um, wait, what are the other ones? Yeah, but it seems more like a means to the goals of having safe, healthy, uh, walkable access to all the resources that uh, Sarah was saying. So that's all about zoning to allow for that kind of housing to happen in the right places. So people who don't have transportation, for example, should be able to live there and have access to the basic resources and stuff. So that's a question of zoning and it's a how to. What are your thoughts, Evan? Yeah, I can, I, I can understand. I mean, to some extent zoning is a vehicle to achieve um, these things, I think to me, um, it could go either way. I mean, to, to me, it's like, we know we will always, well, I shouldn't say this, but my assumption is we will always have a zoning bylaw. And so this was a goal around what, my, my perception of it was a goal around what we want that zoning bylaw to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But I could see you reversing that and saying the goal is the accomplishment, the zoning bylaw is the means. So yeah, I to me, it's tomato, tomato. Mm -hmm. Sarah. So I also see it the way that Shalini does is that it's so you would change zoning in order to achieve a goal. And I also think that as far as community buy in goes, I think that when you just put zoning or zoning change as like the ultimate goal, people start to get nervous and think that you're trying to pull something off on them or what what could be possible. And I think that if if the, that our we have goals, which I think we are diversity and housing achievability, um, uh, using the you know CPA and CDBG monies, things like that. I think that it would have more community buy-in if people knew exactly what our actual goal was, and then see zoning as a way to achieve it and explain why the zoning changes help us achieve those goals. But I could be wrong. Mm -hmm.
So I think we're getting, working our way towards being able to formulate how that top level goal around zoning might look, um, even though I'm still referring it to zoning, but it's, it, the zoning would not be there. I think the top level goal is um, the diversity in housing types, right. um, affordability, and affordability, I think I've heard from everyone, um, we need to somehow figure out affordability or the goal is to have affordability of housing at all income levels. Is that a good way to put it? Um, and so one of, you know, and then I'm just looking at what other people have said the diversity of housing types, affordability of housing at all income levels. Um, we've got um, the workforce housing, Shalini, you mentioned um, th that goes into, I think, the affordability level. Would you agree? The diversity. Mm. Uh, diversity. Yeah. No? Yeah. Well, I have a mistake. No. I, I'm thinking it's, it's, um, what, the, we might be using the word diversity differently. So I'm yeah. thinking of diversity of the actual housing stock. So some apartments, oh, some okay. houses, some duplexes, whereas I think you're thinking of diversity of the oh. people who are living. Yeah, there. yeah, 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 that's right. So we should probably clarify what we mean. Yeah, that's a good diversity, point. Because I, I'm completely thinking we don't want just production of one type of housing. We want ADUs, apartments, duplexes, all, diversity of the housing stock. Yeah. We also want that diverse housing stock to support a socioeconomically and racially diverse communities. Yes, that's a good point. I didn't think of that. And now that you say like a duh, yeah, no, of course. <laughs> so we want the housing yeah. in town to support a diversity of residents. I think the way it was worded somewhere else, whether it's homeowner supports, access to housing and home ownership for BIPOC who have historically had not had equal access to home ownership was one way it was. That was specific to home ownership, but um, I think, I don't know whether we would want to restrict it to that, but we definitely want housing that um, supports the inclusion of all all communities. I'm just randomly writing here marginalized. Um, uh, do we, in terms of goals, I, I had stuff about home ownership um, versus renters um, and all. Um, do we want to potentially have goals that separate out home ownership issues versus rental issues? I, I see we just lost Shalini. Um, Or do we want to weave that into sort of the means to achieve a goal? Sarah? So I would see those as two completely different um, challenges. I think first home, first time buying a home is, has certain um, economic challenges to it. And I also think that still in America, it's an important step for people, although that is changing, but I do think it should be addressed separately, and, but because it has a different set of challenges to it. Other thoughts? And here comes Shalini back in. 
Welcome back, Shalini. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> just a quick nap. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what you missed was a question on um, whether we wanted to sort of have separate goals for homeownership type goals versus goals regarding rental housing stock. Um, and Sarah was mm -hmm. thinking that since homeownership seems to still be an important sort of milestone in people's lives, even though that seems to be changing and also presents its own difficulties in terms of the purchase of a home and and then also the upkeep of a home um than a rental stock does that maybe it would require two separate goals um versus one goal that has multiple uh, means to achieve that goal directed to home ownership versus rental um, and we were still discussing that one Yes, Shalini? Yeah, I like that. And also because that brings in the third category of homelessness too, because that could be its own separate goals. Like as a town, what is our position and goal? You know, what are goals related to that? So it makes it really clean that you have three categories. Evan looks suspicious, <laughs> skeptical. I I am I'm a, I'm a very visual person, so I'm like mm -hmm. I'm having some trouble with this. But because um, I guess in my thought was you have you know what I sort of refer to as the thirty thousand foot goals, and then you have specific actions under them. But you might even have sort of sub goals or sub cat. And so like to me to say overarching um, housing diversity and affordability is sort of a broad okay like we can all agree on that, but what does that actually look like in practice? And I think part of that is affordable home ownership, right? Which, you know, is something I'm interested in because um, I can't achieve that right now. Um, I'm also thinking of, um, you know, uh, I think it was Mandy or maybe Shalini uh, mentioned sort of senior housing. Steve and I, you know, pre-pandemic, we did a little uh, event at Greenleaves and, and we heard over and over again, you know, where's the focus on senior housing? Where is the dedication to senior housing? Um, workforce housing. So to, to me, it's almost like the broad goal is this, but what does that actually look like to have housing diversity and affordability? Well, it means have housing options for seniors. It means housing, housing workforce it means having opportunities for affordable home ownership, but also affordable rental opportunities. Um, and so to me, it's, it's all part of the same package and yeah, it's hard for me to separate out the homelessness one the reason I'm, i look skeptically i'm usually better at controlling my face but i'm too tired um but it, it's just because i it, to some degree it's it's affordability to some degree it's access which is not necessarily always related to mm. affordability and i guess i'm thinking specifically of the sro but i guess that is that's not just about affordability that's also about um, is the support services there? So to, to, it's, it's, it's hard, but I guess to some extent that is still housing diversity. I don't know if anything I just said made sense, but I, throwing it out there. I, I think what I heard from that is we're, we're getting potentially closer to being able to draft a first round of goals that would then throw a bunch of subsets into that that don't have drafts of anything beyond that with you know affordable you know affordability of housing at all income levels would have subsets of dealing with the challenges of home ownership and uh, you know getting that affordable for a whole bunch of people the challenges of affordable rentals um because we know and i know john's probably nodding his head in the attendees section of how unaffordable our rental housing stock is right now in town um and so the affordable ability, you know, and then senior housing is maybe not necessarily under the affordability one, it might be under diversity of housing types. Um, and so then if we're going with diversity of housing types or housing stock, then you're looking at senior housing, you're looking, you're looking potentially at addressing homelessness through the diversity of housing types because they right now don't have access to housing, you need to diversify what types of housing are available to give them access to housing that meets their needs. 
which includes an SRO that might have supportive housing and stuff like that. Um, so I think I'm getting through this conversation an idea of what, what the broad goals would be um, and then a draft document that might have a broad goal and then we could just pop in for the next discussion this, here's things we need to deal with under that broad goal um, and then flush them out each time. And I guess what I'm hearing is, um, you know, and some of these goals, diversity of housing types, housing to support inclusion of all communities, we've got affordability of housing at all income levels, um, zoning, the means to achieve those, all of those would have zoning means underneath them um, and all. Um, I'm hearing municipal commitment to affordable housing is something would also be, I think, the 30,000 foot level, if I'm hearing correctly, um, not a means to achieve these other ones, um, although obviously funding is there. Um, so let me go through, I guess, what I'm hearing in terms of the broad goals, diversity of housing types, housing in town to support the inclusion of all communities, especially those historically marginalized, affordability of housing at all income levels, achievability of the goals over some period of time, um, and then municipal commitment to affordable housing as another large one. Um, I've heard about climate action. Um, I don't know whether that's its own broad 30,000 foot level goal or whether that's a means to achieve other things. It might end up being its own broad 30,000 foot goal. Shalini? Yeah, I can read something from you. Uh, this website. It is brookings.edu and they talk about goals for good housing policy. And um, I can read the specific one related to housing location, construction maintenance should improve environmental sustainability and resilience. So to mitigate environmental impacts, public policy should encourage thoughtful placement of new housing and increase use of clean building materials and technologies. And housing are one of the primary sources of energy consumption requiring fuel, uh, transportation systems that move families between their homes and jobs consume large amounts of energy and housing location patterns, especially proximity to water, also affect communities' vulnerability to the impacts of climate change. So I think by putting the goal there, it makes us think about how we'll do it, and then we'll figure out the how. And But at least it's good to have that goal at least in front of us, so we ask the right questions. Evan. Yeah, I, I actually like that. I, I agree with Shalini. And because my thought is um, that allows us to really show how connected a lot of these things are, which is something that I think we as a committee have acknowledged as important since we put it in uh, the questions we asked for, for planning board. Because I'm thinking when, when we say, um, climate, sustainability, and housing, my very first thought is um, we're thinking about heating types, right? But then it also relates so closely to density and walkability and, and mm -hmm. transit-oriented development um, right. that I think if, if we don't sort of weave into a policy, um, might get forgotten in, in some of the climate debate. So I, I actually really like that as having it as a as a goal because it, it really is bigger than I think people just immediately go to like put solar panels on your house. It's like, no, 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 honey, that's not all. Exactly. Thank you. So I've added that as sort of a, I guess that we're up to about six at this point, I think. And do you have, I think with, sorry. Go, go ahead, Shalini. What Evan was saying about having communities or neighborhoods that are diverse in the sense of there are some low income, there's some mixed, you know, some mixed income housing in neighborhoods rather than just having low income here and then the richer neighborhoods here and then a Latino or Portuguese neighborhood here. It's like try to integrate, have more integrated communities. 
Um, I'm adding it into the housing in town to support the inclusion of all communities type goal that does not have good wording right now, but um, I, yeah, I because, want to notes of integration. Yeah, there are two aspects to that, right? One is that we are affordable to the diverse communities, workforce, lower income, um, and BIPOC communities. And so that we have, it's diverse, yeah, to the diverse populations. And then within a neighborhood, we are facilitating mixed income housing. Yeah. Okay. Adding it to the notes. Looking at what other people have said, um, we've got, I think, Evan, the only one I'm not sure we've covered from you is the economic and legal protections to reduce vulnerability. Mm -hmm. It, you seem to indicate that that would be a broader level goal. Um, given how this conversation is going, is that still a broader level goal for you or is it woven into the means to achieve something else? If we can even have the mind to even think this through. Hmm. So, so to me, just where that comes from is, is sort of twofold. One, we know that our renters are, are are some of our more vulnerable residents. Some of that is economic, um, which obviously touches on housing affordability. Some of it is also, um, I think, the way in which renters are often maligned in this community. Um, and, and you know, I have people all the time saying, uh, well, we're in a public community, so, but I have people all the time saying, you know, I'm breaking this one little rule. And so I feel nervous about coming forward to report, you know, a, a bad living condition or unsanitary conditions because I don't want to get in trouble. So stuff like that. And so to me, to me, it's it's not just economic vulnerability. There's also sort of uh, a security issue in there. Um, and, and where this actually came from, I should say, is um, you you put, I think it was um, Minneapolis's, right? Um, Thing. And so I was looking into that and I, then I also saw Minneapolis had passed sort of a, a tenant's bill of rights in which they sort of vocally committed to like enforcing health and safety standards, sanitary, sanitary conditions and trying to basically reassure renters. And that's sort of where that came from. And so I don't necessarily know that it's covered in all of those. I, so maybe it is a bigger goal. I'm worried that we're 30,000 foot goals means you have very few and they're very broad and I feel like we're, they're multiplying, but just to give people an idea of what the background of that statement. So I added a seventh um, based on that. Right now it's tentative title is safe and secure housing. It, it needs help, mm -hmm. but it would be the, the tenant supports that I talked about from Minneapolis that you were just talking about. Um, improving living conditions of rental housing, fully participating community life protections so that people aren't afraid to report those living conditions because they might be violating other things. Um, stuff like that. Uh, rules, so it might not be bylaws, zoning bylaws, or some of it could be the means could be changing zoning bylaws, but it could also be implementing rules and regulations through inspectional services or something that would address some of that concern too, um, privacy actions relating to that and stuff. So this is obviously a work in progress. So we might start with seven or eight and as we work our way through, we might come down and better integrate them into small, lower numbers of 30,000 foot goals, larger numbers of things underneath them um, and all. So, Anyone, Shalini, you have your hand up. Yes, I think uh, this is a really nice goal that links to that. It's housing should not harm the health and safety of families or communities, or we can put it in a more positive way, which is housing that ensures health and safety. And under that is policies such as minimum quality building standards are necessary to protect families and communities. And um, today's housing, blah, 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 examples, but like a resident, uh, like drinking, you know, safe water, public, poorly designed and maintained may also harm neighbors, uh, fire and, you know, fire hazards. And so all of these could come under what Evan was talking about. And that's actually the goal number one, because when you're providing 
housing. And that is a huge thing for people who are living in a substandard and they don't want to speak up against the landlords. And again, we could have more positive incentives for landlords, maybe like reward the landlords who do take care of their buildings and their tenants and stuff rather than always a, in favor of carrot and not the stick. But that will be the strategies how to implement that. We can, because we'll have goals under, I mean, we'll have more specific objectives and then strategies to implement and then measurables. What are the key performance indicators to measure that these goals are being met and whatnot. Yeah, so it sounds like our outline would be goals and then objectives under the goals and mm -hmm. strategies under that potentially. Mm -hmm. And measure, measurables. And measurables. I think we're making some progress. Um, yeah. Would it be possible for you to do share screen? I just, I'm trying to, I'm having trouble. Oh, yeah. sure, you're gonna get my notes. Um, you mean, before, instead of looking at us, you'd rather look at the screen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> Not even a moment's hesitation. No, that's the best part about being sleep deprived. Everyone is so honest. <laughs> we don't have the energy to lie. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share, let me, and, and John, I do see your hand up. We will get to you momentarily. Um, so don't, don't worry, I'm not ignoring you. Um, let, let me, Okay, so we're going to try this. There we go. So that's my notes right now. Yep. The first set of outlines is the broad goals. The second set is probably more of the um, objectives and strategy, com a combination of objectives, strategies, and no measurables right now because we haven't talked about any measurables mm -hmm. right now. Um, and this is just a short... Um, is it my brief notes on what it would be without any care to how the wording is right now? Because uh, that obviously has to go and be thought out a little bit better. Um, so, Sarah, unmute, please. Fingers not working. Um, I'm not sure, right now it looks like it might go under, so address climate action and sustainability of housing stock. And I, I sort of am sort of clinging to the word resiliency, but having been someone who was poverty level for a really long time and also did not have a car, um, again, it comes to my idea of, I said ecosystem, but it can be what supports uh, people in uh, housing or community or neighborhood. And so, again, thinking about, um, I guess, like where you're placing something and what supports are there. Um, food is one, healthcare is another. I think that, you know, it might also, so again, I'm sleep deprived, so this uh, doesn't come out really clearly, but I'm thinking about what you have available to you to help your survival. So that could be something that's close by, it could be something that you have public transit to. So things that you need in order to survive that when you don't have a car is very difficult and that people might not be thinking of. Okay. Shalini. Yeah, I would add jobs to that list, right? Like uh, the, I guess transportation that takes them to their job, healthcare and food. Uh, and then the other thing I was thinking of is like, I'm also hearing from people how, um, they're not able to read the forms and fill the forms right now with rental assistance. So I'm reading this one goal somewhere which says information about housing transactions should be clear so that people and companies can make good decisions. But basically what that's talking about is that people who really need the support and help are not able, or are not able to access these resources because they're not so savvy and stuff. So, you know, like affordable housing, right? Let's say not square. So many people didn't even know that there are affordable houses available there, for example. So having website and information and all of that centralized so that people have easy access to 
this kind of information and it's bilingual and they have are able to make use of these resources. So I think transparency and ease of access of information related to housing could be, I don't know if that's a higher level goal or not, but so it's put as a higher level goal here, sorry. Yeah. I'm adding it into the safe and secure housing tenant support yes. economic okay. legal protection section. Okay. Um, it's, it's obviously a goal in progress, but that seemed okay. to be the best location for now without adding mm -hmm. a new goal. Sarah, is your hand still up? Okay, yep, Sarah. Unmute, please. Okay, so just to kind of fit this in with what Shalini said, and I'm, I'm not sure if we do wanna tackle this, but in thinking of my own neighborhood and, you know, Shalini mentioned North Square, one of the things that I feel very, um, that I'd like to advocate is something like, I'm just gonna use the Eruptor Lab, just something that we would have zoning that would not discourage um, places, uh, businesses that could employ people who are working um, in that housing. So, you know, we, we wouldn't necessarily discourage certain types of businesses um, in these neighborhoods or close to these neighborhoods. And that's huge and controversial. So I'm gonna put it out there, but I don't know if people agree we should put it in. I'm gonna just type it in slightly like that as the climate action. It's not the best spot for it, but zoning that would promote sort of all of those mixed uses mm. that you just discussed within the neighborhoods. Um, okay, Shalini. Oh, I was gonna put my hand down because, yeah, I'm not sure also because yeah, it's such an interconnected uh, goal with mixed use, uh, mixed income housing because it tackles that easy access to places of work. It tackles the climate action goal um, and raises people's income. So it's economic vitality. So making mixed income, promoting at least certain zones, right? Not, all, not, not that every neighborhood needs to be mixed income, mixed use, but definitely it will. Promoting certain zones where have more zones that allow for this mixed income, mixed use. Yep. Okay. It seems our mm. portion of the conversation is slightly winding down. So yeah. we had no people who wanted to comment in general public comment before the meeting started. So I figured they were waiting for specific sections of the agenda to make the comments more useful. So we're going to go to public now for comments. Um, we've got John, I'm going to work on unmuting you so you can speak. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, I have to say, I'm a little disappointed in this discussion um, for a couple of reasons. Um, I sent you a three page or so uh, set of ideas about what might be included in goals for a general town housing policy. And while I would say that 80% or so of what I included has already has been part of your discussion. And yet I think those comments have been formally ignored. Um, another thing that I added, which didn't have to do with goals for the town policy per se, but also about process goals and who should be included in this discussion, mm -hmm. I also think has been completely ignored. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these come from the racial equity task force. And basically, as you all know, they're asking for a greater uh, participation in these kinds of processes, which affect their membership, their community. And when we're talking about affordable housing, nothing, well, I won't say nothing is more important, but I think that's among the things that are most important to that community. So really what I'm disappointed about is that like most of town council, you continue to be pretty insular, rely on only discussing 
what you can generate offhand as you struggle with reinventing the wheel. And uh, you're not inviting other people, not just me, but other people formally into the conversation who might have something to say about it. Thank you, John, for your comment. Hmm. Melanie. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge what John just said. And in terms of um, involving community members and at what point, I mean, just because we haven't done it now doesn't mean we're not going to. It's more, we are looking at forming, it hasn't yet formed a community yet, a, a committee with, uh, uh, to represent the diverse groups, uh, disenfranchised, BIPOC, low income people. So we are gonna have a, commi uh, a committee that's gonna do that and I think it's a question of, I guess we don't have to wait for that committee to be formed to help us create the spaces to have these different, because is the same issue is gonna come up with zoning changes as well. Like how do we get people informed? And that's been a lifelong of the local government so far. And hopefully it is gonna change moving forward now. Um, I think everyone is really motivated and we are looking at different models how to do that. So it is going to happen, John, don't be disheartened. Um, but yes, it hasn't happened yet. And maybe the question is, do we not, we don't have to wait for that committee to be formed and, and then at what stage and how do we include people in these conversations? So some of the comments that I think all of us are bringing in is based on what we are learning from, uh, you know, the, the struggles that I shared about rental forms and whatnot. So they're not made in a vacuum. Those are made based on us reaching out to people in the community and getting feedback because we haven't found those people coming directly to these meetings, even if we advertise or even if we reach out. So clearly we're not doing a good job of that, but also the fact is that people are busy and have multiple jobs and are not going to come to these meetings. So that's a longer process to figure out how to get. But meanwhile, this is where we are. And um, so yeah, if anyone else wants to add to that. <laughs> Mindy, I think you said my name, but you're muted. But I think I just read your lips. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot I'd muted myself so that my typing wasn't, no wonder. No wonder okay. you weren't. Yes, I did say your name. <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually do. I mean, so I think that we do at some point need to have a conversation about what our process is going to be to put this together, even though I'm so tired of process all the time. Um, but I do, we don't usually respond to public comment, but it's John, so I'm going to. Um, I, I, I wanted to say, first of all, you know, I don't, I, I, I bristle at the idea that the recommendations were ignored. Um, I read them in full. I think that all of the broad things that are in there have been incorporated into what we put on the table. What hasn't been are the specifics. And so my, my vision of what we were doing here was, again, 30,000 foot goals. What are the broad overarching goals of the policy we're creating before we get down to specifics? And, and I think the broad goals uh, as far as priorities that are in the document that were sent to us by John are in what we just talked about, what's not there yet are the specifics, but we haven't gotten there yet. As far as process, I do think that we need to, to think about our process. I don't think it's insular for us to start a discussion on a council policy in the council committee that is charged with that. I, I think that's actually an appropriate place for us to start that conversation to say, we're, we've been tasked with this, what are our goals? What do we want to see this policy look like before we shop it out to other areas, before we bring in a broader public input? And in fact, this is what the trust did with their original version is the trust came up 
on their committee with what they want. And then they sent it to planning board and CPA and town council and, and all of that to say, okay, this is sort of where we're at. What do y'all think? Which is, I kind of thought is probably where we'd be going. I fully expect that having a climate section means at some point we will send it to say ECAC and say, what, what are you thinking about this in, in other places? But I do think it's perfectly appropriate for this committee to be the starting discussion of that to shape what we're even looking for, because inevitably it is a policy that is being crafted and adopted by the council. Thank you. Um, any other comments at this time? I think we now need to decide where we go with the discussion we just had. Um, my thinking and potential proposal is to try and draft a more formal looking document that has some of what I threw on the screen on there. Um, maybe a little bit better worded or better thought out wording wise. Um, and then throws some of those more specifics into either the objective section or a strategy section or a measurable section, but sort of start putting in an outline. Um, and so where we could move stuff around um, and start drafting and start coming to something uh, for our meeting in, I guess it would be about a month um, because we won't have time at the September 15th meeting to deal with this. Um, but start doing that. I don't think until we have a document we could send people, I guess my opinion is until we have something in writing, um, we can't really send anything to people. Uh, I would like to hear from the committee as to whether we want to formally invite either certain committees or committee members to our meetings when this comes up again to discuss this at this time or at future times, what sort of process do we want to follow and when do we want to start seeking all of that input, I guess, is the next thing. So thoughts on that? Sarah? So my thought is, yes, I agree that right now what we were just doing as a committee was spitballing and trying to come up with Granted, maybe our, you know, we don't have all the answers. I don't think we think we have all the answers, but to give some kind of a broad idea or structure. And then I do think that we should, I think that we, we do ask for people's opinions. So yeah, something similar, it doesn't have to be a hearing, but something where we put out to certain, uh, to the, the community as a whole, and then to certain committees, um, or organizations to say here is our starting point and then we make it very clear this is our starting point we are welcoming ideas and constructive criticism um, and so of course we want input and we make it clear that we are looking for input um, so maybe yeah we get this together and we all look at it and say we agree and we think the graphics are good or the setup is good and then we shop it out Did, Can I ask someone, oh, go ahead, Shalini. Oh, no, no, Mandy, you go ahead. I was just going to ask clarifying from Sarah. So would the shopping out or the asking for input come at the next meeting or after everyone, after this whole committee has had a chance to see that document and sort of go with this is a good sort of really first draft of basic starting point things that now we're ready to put out or would that be done before the next meeting? I think that we should meet next time. And now that if, if it's, um, I think we should meet next time and all of us be thinking about, you know, maybe we all sort of fit things together ourselves so that we, we should look at it. I think we need time ourselves to look at it and to look at, you know, if we want to change something or change the direction and feel like we all have an understanding of where we're coming from. And then I think we should open it up to other people because um, I don't think that it impedes the input from other people for us to just have 
a basic starting point. I think a basic starting point helps people discuss things, right? So even if people take a look at it and say, this is garbage, it still gives us a place to then build from. So I think it's important we know where we think we're going first. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I saw some thumbs up from Evan and Steve on that. Um, Shalini's nodding her head. So I think that means our, the next meeting we'll be discussing this is, let me pull up my calendar. Um, Just wanted to alert you that John has his hand up. I, I will get there momentarily. Um, I think our next meeting that we will be discussing this is October 6th. Um, pending our meeting schedule discussion coming up after this. Um, and so I think the goal would be for me to have a draft of some sort of very starting point draft two weeks or a week before that to be able to put in a packet to send out to everyone. We've discussed everything sort of going into it at this point. So I don't think it represents um, unauthorized deliberation to send that out, um, especially if it's published simultaneously. Everyone would come to that meeting with their thoughts on that. We'd work on crafting that, modifying it, um, getting it to a better place, um, at which point we would also be at the meeting coming in with who we want to formally invite or send it to for seeking comment and setting a date for the next one where it would be more of an open conversation type meeting than something else. Is Does that sort of sound like a plan at this point? Um, now I have to write that all down. <laughs> Where's the train going by? It sounded lovely. I'm on, yeah, it's a... Uh... You know, we live right near the road. And then if it's going south, it'll be near me soon. It's a, it's a going towards Belchertown. So that's right. Um, yep, so it'll, it'll be near me in about a minute and a half. I and I are living near the, the train track. track. <laughs> we can, you know, I can see it from my house. Yeah, me I loved too. it when Amtrak came through. Hmm. We're, we're both close, but I'm on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> You're a renter, that's why. <laughs> You live on the cool street. Sadly, I'm a homeowner and I'm on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> I we probably could have heard it up at Cushman area. Can you hear the train from your house? Yeah. Yeah, we absolutely can. And on the farm, depending on which train we can hear from which direction, you can tell when we're going to get a really big rainstorm because of the how if you're out back, you can uh, hear different trains. So, yeah. Interesting. So I see that John has put his hand down. So I it might have been a legacy, it might have been a mm. legacy of mm. the first conversation um, and the first comment, because I couldn't figure out how to undo his hand. So that might have just been a legacy of that. Um, I think we've got a plan. Any other thoughts on that before we move on to the next item, Shalini? Um, yeah. I I'm just going to say, these are random thoughts coming up right now. So um, I think there have been uh, different groups that are reaching out to us, like let's say the defund group, the ra racial equity task, and none of them on their own represent the large, I would say even larger BIPOC community because I've reached out to four different um black friends I have and none of them were like, well, I was in read, I did not even know this is happening, like the racial equity task force. Um, the defund they knew more so because of the headlines, but some of them didn't even know that because they don't read the newspaper or whatever. But they were like, I don't know if those people represent me. So it's just that I think we have to build bridges with these multiple groups and not take any one group as the, the group. And, um, and yet many of these groups have connections to many other families. So 
And the same thing is happening across. Like I've been reaching out in my district to different people and and finding like, wow, I can now, you know, that there's this all, this whole group of Latino families or there are these black family, you know, so these are the, and so I, if we can find out key groups and in different districts, then we start conversation with them and reach out to them to, to then gather maybe information from and be an advocate for their community, so to speak. And eventually, again, I do hope we will use human-centered design again. And I say that because uh, I follow Strong Towns is a website for, and it really has amazing articles and insightful articles, how to engage and build neighborhoods, strong neighborhoods. And one of the things they say that a problem that happens in community meetings is that we ask residents, what do you want? And then we end up doing something totally different because the residents don't always have the answers when you're asking them for answers and solutions. They're not the experts or they are going, we, what we sh and so then there's this gap and people are never happy. Like you wasted their time and you never ended up doing what we asked for. So what the, that article was suggesting is that, and that's really what the human-centered design is, that you ask people about their lived experiences and you know, where did they go and shop? How, what bus or what transportation do they take to go to work, to shop? And so you get gather data about how people are living their lives. And then from that, the, pol the people, the policymakers, like the town manager, actually not even policy, the town manager, and so forth, they will be figuring out, okay, what is what are the challenges and how do we provide the solutions for that so it's really important the kind of questions we ask from people and not like what they want because it's not necessarily that may not be the right solution but we can ask them what are your challenges with respect to housing and renting and and food and you know transportation and all of those thank you Seeing no other hands, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is fall 2020 meeting times. Um, number one, I want to point out that we are having a meeting on September 15th. When I went to my calendar, I was surprised to see that I didn't have a meeting in my calendar for September 15th, um, but we have one for September 15th. We will not have one. I don't know whether this was just me putting in the wrong date or not. I had one listed for September 22nd. We will not have one September 22nd. We will have one September 15th instead. Um, I think that was me not checking the calendar and knowing when Dave asked me if the 15th was okay for Christine Brestrup and Rob to come, knowing it was two weeks after this meeting. And so we must be having a meeting um, without actually checking to see if we'd schedule a meeting that day. But we will not have one two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. So we will not do one on the 22nd, but we will do one on the 15th. Um, Beyond that, we had, when we set this two to four time, indicated that we would revisit it come the fall because I know Sarah and I in particular were unsure whether this is a time that was good for us at all. Um, and, and I know Sarah had said she can work at it and make it through the summer. And I knew my, my family schedule, I, I was not sure whether two to four would be accommodatable come fall. Um, so I don't know so I'm going to actually just pull people because the easiest thing to do is keep it at this time if it's working for everyone, but I'm going to pull people now to see if two to four on Tuesdays still works for people um, or whether they would like to find another time. So we will start with Shalini on that one. Yes, this time works. Okay. Um, for me, given where school is right now and family life is right now, two to four will work. There is a possibility that I will not ever be able to go exactly past four, mm. depending on what my kid's schedule ends up being. If that's the case, if the meeting runs late, Shalini as vice chair would get to take over the meeting starting at four when I have to leave. It is also Yay. an incentive to finish the meeting no later than four um, for everyone. Um, Can I make everyone meditate in that since I'm vice chair then? <laughs> <laughs> Rest of the time, we're going to just sit and learn how to train that. <laughs> um, that to Evan. 
Uh, yes, mm. I can do Tuesdays two to four. And I think the fact that someone might have to leave exactly at four is an incentive to keep that time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve. That works for me. And Sarah. Yeah, and I'm the same boat as you with kids and getting supper on the table. At, well, for me, it's getting supper on the table at five and then helping with homework and whatnot. Mm. I don't know that I would be able to go much over four either. So more mm. incentive. There we go to be just right on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my next question is, it sounds like we're all okay keeping two to four. My next question is, the last couple of meetings have been directly after a council meeting that has gone extremely late on a Monday night. And so we have all been... I'm not sure if we've all been at our best Tuesday, even by 2 p.m. So I would like to know whether we would like to, I think the rest of the meeting tentative schedule when I threw it in was to have them after the day after every council meeting. Um, it currently conflicts with the finance committee meeting who also meets the day after every council meeting. Uh, they start at 2.30. Uh, would we like to, think about or move them to the week that there are not council meetings as long as those are not holidays. I would obviously check. Um, I know getting into September, October might have a couple of holidays that run into it and, and sometimes there's some November holidays that are on Tuesdays. But would we prefer to have them on the week that is not a council meeting if possible? I am seeing some nodding of heads there. <laughs> um, so I, I that definitely means, admit that today is tough, but yeah, today's tough. There's a lot of other things going on, but I think that was our latest ever last time. Yeah, might have been. I think it might have been. Um, I will certainly, I think, look to avoid um, election day in November too. Um, yeah. I didn't even realized when I set this one, I was not paying attention that this was also an election day or I probably would have avoided it anyway. Um, so what I will do is go through the schedule again, um, mark which ones might change and see if we can move as many as possible to the week after a council meeting instead of the week of a council meeting, but keeping two to 4 p.m. And we'll get a schedule out to people um, probably before the next meeting so that we can look it over, but for a formal vote because it is changing of a schedule so that we can just formally adopt the modified schedule for Athena to be able to put online. Uh, and this is sounds, through December, through the end of the this year? Would be, I, I assume through December. If anyone wants me to set that through longer than December, um, we reorganize in January as a oh, council. Right. Uh, that probably includes the reorganization of committees. I don't know who will be president and whether that would change the makeup of committees. We could still attempt to set the time so that they're in our calendar in case the committee does not change um, in membership. If people would like, I could put January, February, and maybe March on if people are interested. We don't have council meeting schedule yet for that set of months yet either. In some ways, I wish we could set a for all of our committees have a set date like the planning board does and then you can sort of make a decision on mm. what committee you want to be on based on when they meet but mm. yeah i'm not sure we'll ever get there would people like to see a schedule through at least march of next year i think scheduled through january would be safe because that mm. takes us through the reorg if there is a reorg and then also those of us that have an app to that teach. Um, mm -hmm. I think that UMass is starting at the end of January this year, although I'm, we're not sure about that, are we? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. By start, I mean, yeah. I didn't think we'd but be think starting in August and just a couple of months yeah. ago, so. End of January would seem safe. Yeah, I agree. I, I will put out a schedule through the end of January um, since we likely, even at a reorganization, wouldn't have new committee assignments till then anyway. Um, so I will do that. Any other thoughts on schedule? Seeing none, that takes us to minutes. Um, so Athena and I were talking before this. I actually have copies of the August 26 minutes that she sent me like Friday. 
and I ignored them because I didn't think I'd put them on this agenda and I didn't want to have to make her change the agenda and also post everything and go through all of that. And so we do not, are not ready to adopt minutes from the two August 26th meetings because of my issue, not because we don't have them. I let them sit in my inbox without paying attention to what I'd actually put on the agenda um, to get them to you guys all in time. So we will do them at the next meeting. We have the August 18th minutes um, in person, but in ready to adopt at this time. Um, so is there any requested changes to them? I am not seeing any. Is there then a, I guess I will then make a motion to, where's, where's my, a motion to approve the August 18th, 2020 minutes as presented. Is there a second? Steve seconds. Uh, we roll call. Um, we're up to me, I guess. Um, I am a yes. That takes us to Evan. Yes. Steve. Yes. Sarah. Aye. Felony. Yes. That is a 5 0. They are adopted. Thank you. Any announcements from anyone? My only announcement is September 15. Uh, we are having Chris Brestrup and uh, Rob Mora here to present the planning department's ideas on zoning revision priorities. The planning board has voted, is my understanding, or agreed upon their top 10 list. That memo mm -hmm. will be coming to me soon. I will distribute it to the whole, not, not just you guys, but the whole council when I do get it so that everyone has that and it will end up in the packet. Um, enough counselors have indicated desire to be there that it will be called as a full council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you guys as members of CRC have no need to send me your own priorities. We will be having that discussion as a group. Um, I have asked for counselors to send me theirs. I have gotten a few. I am keeping track of that. Uh, closer to the meeting, I will post that list as an anonymous priorities list from counselors. Um, I expect to get more in the next week or so. If not, I'll post what I have. Um, but but hopefully we will be able to start a conversation on that at that point. Shalini. So are we are we sending ours to you? Um, can we know? You don't need to. I mean, if you want to, and if you want it included in that, then that is fine. Um, mm. uh, it is always possible. I will be posting anything I receive as an anonymous, here's what I received from counselors without attribution to which counselors asked for what. Um, but you guys are part of the committee. So when these things go out, I always just assume the committee members will bring their own lists to the meeting. Um, and the, the request That's is great. really for those that can't be part of the meeting. But okay. now that it's a full council meeting, we may not actually get more than what we've already gotten because people will be at the meeting to be able to talk about their own priorities as everyone will be able to participate. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to, feel free to, but it's not necessary. Um, I think that's my only announcement. I think I am no. thinking about uh, to go to next agenda preview. Next agenda is zoning. The agenda after will be a minimum of housing. We'll see what else needs to be on there, if anything. Um, I am thinking about on that agenda for the October meeting of potentially putting a post-mortem down of the process we just went through for planning board appointments. Um, it can't be next meeting. It was not on this agenda um, to talk about whether there's any changes to the process that we adopted we might want, or just to talk about how things went. Um, and see I think, sorry, I couldn't, there's a lawnmower. How things went, what? On the planning board appointment process that we've adopted and we used for the first time, just to be able it to, while it's fresh in our minds, are there any changes to the process we might want to explore um, before we face other vacancies that we need to use the process again for? So a post-mortem on sort of that whole process. Um, is a thought for the October 6th meeting. I know it will have been a full month from the time we did the process, but given our agenda's plans, it's as, about as early as I can put it. Um, 
if people do not want to do that, let me know. Um, but I think it would be a good idea. I don't have any other agenda items people would like to see in the next couple agendas. Steve. Yeah, so um, on the topic you had just mentioned, that was a rough night. I think we can all agree that was a rough, rough night yesterday, but I'm really proud to be part of this group. So I think we had differences of opinion amongst ourselves and amongst the, the town council, but I thought that everyone who spoke, all 13 of us, um, spoke from our hearts and from our beliefs. And I, I just want to say that um, I think a lot of us felt really that it was kind of rough and tumble, not, 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 um, what I don't, I'm not sure what the outcome was that we were expecting, but that I'm proud to be part of this particular group and the process that we went through. And I think we can improve on that for sure. I look forward to the discussion. So even though we don't necessarily share the value on that particular outcome, I think that we're all did a great job in articulating what we do value. Anything else on next agendas or agenda items, Sarah? Since Steve brought this up and I sort of talked about this a little bit before we went live, um, because of being on OCA and you know how committees work, I just want to say that I'm very sensitive, you know, to how I react in a meeting as a minority. And um, I hope that there was nothing that I did that felt disrespectful to this committee. And if we want to talk about like how minority, because I will just tell you, I don't necessarily feel like a minority report when, when we're reporting out to council. If I'm in the minority, or even if anybody, I, I feel like the minority report belongs, you know, written in the report i don't necessarily i don't i myself do not feel like it needs the same amount of time as a majority report um when we're saying something out to the council and also i feel like when it comes to appointments um that can kind of torpedo the good work of a committee and so i was trying to be really sensitive to that um and i really appreciated shalini you know saying hey take a deep breath and let's not all assume you know where someone is coming from and um my comment was coming from process which you know coming from oka i think is the most important thing so i just wanted to let people know that that's where i was coming from and um, i'm open to any discussion that this committee wants to have about um how a minority report would be put out or ways that would be more constructive um, instead of destructive. Thank you. Anything else before we move on to items not anticipated? None. I do not have any items not anticipated. Does anyone else? Not seeing any. Therefore, mm -hmm. we are going to end early. <laughs> thank you. I just want to end early, so I don't want to say more, but thank you, Sarah, for, um, and yes, you were, it felt very heartfelt, and it, it comes through that you genuinely care, and it's not bringing other people down and making assumptions, so that's very clear, and I think that's, I feel good about our committee here. Yes. <laughs> With that, if there's nothing else. I will adjourn this meeting at 3.28 p.m. Yay. Enjoy the beautiful day outside, people. Yes. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bye -bye. Lindsay. Hi. Thank you, Lindsay.